Hey everyone, it is the Charming Giraffe and today is part two of the How Did They Dry 30 Days, 30 Different Acrylic Pour Techniques. So we're starting with day 16. If you didn't see the first set, first part, um, I'll link it in the end cards and in the description below. And I'll also link all the videos for these paintings there as well in case there's a specific one that you want to see. Um, so this is day 16 and this was a kiss pour using just black and white. These colors were of your request. Um, and this one did crack a little bit, but it's simply black and white. So it actually turned out really cool, especially because the black cracked the most and you got to see the white through it. And that was the one that was kind of, there was less white on the painting than there was black. So it actually kind of turned out pretty cool. Um, don't don't not like it. Um, I love this section. It kind of reminds me like the end, of, like the edge of the universe or something. <laughs> That's what it makes me think of. But yeah, really happy with this one. And then here's day 17. This was a split cup using pinks, purples, and I believe there's glow in the dark in here. So we're going to turn the lights off and see if it glows. <laughs> it's glowing a little bit in person, but I don't see it too much through the camera. Maybe, oh, I'll tiny bit right there go ahead and turn the black light on oh there's neon in here oh it looks so cool so this is the glow in the dark you can see it glow now <laughs> so the pink is not glow in the dark it's that green color but look at all these cells and like having it with the black light really helps you kind of differentiate and see those uh like the contrast that the black light helps with. Super cool. Let's turn the lights back on. I'll do a close up. All right. So here we are for a close up, but that black light really helps with the uh, contrast. We got some cells popping up here. So, yeah. Very happy with this one. And then day 17 was a leaky cup pour. Love the way this one turned out. This one has this orange, almost like flower in the middle here. And these all kind of just remind me of like peacock feathers. So um, some great ideas for different color combinations and um, embellishments that we can do using that split, uh, using that leaky cup. Here's a close up of the painting with the flowers and these little like peacock feathers. Not exactly sure what caused the flower shape in the middle, but I'm happy with it. <laughs> and then day 18 was a straight pour on a spinner. And this may have been a leftover paint pour as well. Can't really remember at this point. Um, but there's the middle with all of the kind of colors coming together and all these very tight lines throughout the piece. And I remember when I first poured this, that this was like the best straight pour I've done to date. <laughs> so very happy with this one. And then for day 20 was a bloom in quotations <laughs> um, technique. I didn't use any of the regular materials for a bloom technique. We just used mixed mineral pouring paint and silicone oil. The first time we tried it, it did not work. So I put more paint on the canvas, did it again. And this turned out absolutely incredible. Could not be happier with it. Love the neons, love the um, Halloween-y vibe that this one gave with the colors. And yeah, really happy with the way this one turned out. And then day 21 was a dip pour. Uh, didn't get full coverage, so we had to kind of touch up the edges and the corners, but still turned out really pretty. Think this will be a great one to embellish as well. Got lots of bright, vibrant colors here. And then day 22 was a strainer pour. And this one also looks nothing like it did at the end of the video all of these cells popped up from the oyster the it's a metallic white color off-white color and this is kind of our center of our strainer or er, colander and so all of this is from the different um little holes that the paint pours out of but i love the way this one dried i put it in safe keeping area to dry and when i went back the next day i was so happy when i saw all these cells pop up yeah let me know what you think of this piece and if you remember the original and how it looked. And then day 23 was a geode pour. Table was off level a little bit, so it kind of fell away this side a little bit, but still very happy with it. Cracked a little, but I think it actually 
goes with the theme. It's a stone. It's not perfect. One of the paints was actually also a little chunky. It was, must be really old paint. Um, but again, I think it just adds to this piece. Oh, and look at that gold. There's another one coming up that has some gorgeous gold in it. I can't wait to show you. But yeah, really happy with this. I'm sure I've done this before, but I don't really remember it. So I'm very happy with the way this one came out, even with the bumpiness like normally i don't like that but in this piece it works so well and then day 24 was a string pull using metallic color so we had a white base and then fairy spit amethyst and gold forgot about this one having gold in it too oh, that gold is so pretty this one kind of turned out fuzzy um it's not your camera it's not your eyes it just kind of expanded and i don't really know why it reacted that way um the next day when i went and looked at it, i'm like huh that has never happened before, so I don't really have an answer for it, but it still looks cool, so I'm not upset about it. Love the gold. I don't think you can go wrong with that gold. It's so pretty. And then day 25 was a acrylic pour over a tumbler, so I'm going to start with the painting. I love the pink and silver, I'm assuming. Use some sort of silver in here. Um... Or maybe it's just black and white and it just turned silvery. I don't know. Love this bow that we kind of got in the middle here from the paint. Love the shimmeriness, as you guys knew. Look at those, like, baby cells inside of the lines. <laughs> so cool. Really happy with that. And then the tumbler turned out amazing as well. And this will be a great time to let you guys know that I do plan to do a 30 different um, resin techniques. And part of that will be sealing this cup with resin. Oh yeah, here's the bottom. Love how those lines just go seamlessly over the edge. So cool. And then day 26 was a shovel pour. And this one definitely had too much paint on it and cracked, but... I think it actually still looks amazing. Um, I think this was the way it actually poured. So these are the white lines that kind of came naturally from when I poured it. And then these lines that kind of expanded while drying were the lines that I created with a stick. So kind of made it blend a little bit better. And I even really like this kind of light section there. Not sure what I'll do with this one. Definitely feels like it needs something added, but we'll see. And then I told you guys during this video that I would show myself um, peeling the skin off of the shovel. I wasn't recording by mistake. I thought I was. And so I want to at least still show you the skin, even though I didn't get it recorded um, that I peeled that off. And then day 27 was a balloon smash. This is not the orientation it was. I think it was like this. <laughs> um, this is my absolute favorite technique and I love the way this one came out. This painting I actually recorded and did before day one, <laughs> even though this one didn't get posed until day 27. Um, this is what got me back into the series or into painting and wanting to do this series. And so yeah, <laughs> this was the, the guy that started it all. Um, but my very favorite technique, I just love the design. This is still my favorite part of this painting is that, that little pattern that it made. And when we did the dip on this, I put it on to the side onto a um, canvas that was still wrapped. And there is a video of me peeling that acrylic skin. So um, if you're interested, it's just two or three videos back. <laughs> And then day 28 was the angel wing pour, which I had never done before. <laughs> um, this was my first attempt. Um, while recording this one, I did record a second attempt. So if you want to see how that one turned out, let me know in the comments and I will post that video as well. Dried really well, even though I was so worried it was going to crack. We just got this one little area and I'm not even really sure. Like I'm sure it's like a way of cracking, but it's very odd. I'm like a little eyeball. But look at the gold. Oh, I'm so happy. I love this gold. I need to get myself some more. But look at how gorgeous these wings turned out. Oh, it looks like maybe a tiny bit of cracking there. But it follows the line, so it doesn't really distract from the piece. Um, unless you're close up, you couldn't tell. Can't tell in the video until I get right here. And then you can tell there's a little bit of cracking. <laughs> so, same in person. I uh, can't really tell unless you're really that close to it. I am so happy with the way this one turned out. 
Also, let me know if you want me to embellish an angel here. So I'm thinking I might do to kind of cover up this, this little area. Let me know what you think in the comments. And then day 29 was the hair dryer pour. Definitely my most successful hair dryer pour. And I don't think it cracked hardly at all. Um, the base cut was very thin because I didn't have a lot of paint. And this does look on level. That's just the characteristics of the metallic paint for the background. It is completely level. Yeah, completely level. Not even any paint chunks. That's all level. So let me bring it for close up. And this might take a minute because it's a very big canvas. But I love the colors. Some of my favorites with that cherry shimmer and that cosmic teal. I do still wish I would have put more black in here. Look at this section here. How that made like that dark purpley color. So pretty. And then finally, day 30 was a pendulum pour. Pendulum pour, how are we supposed to say that word? Um, <laughs> and so I pre-painted the background with Deco Art Extreme Sheen, um, Emerald and Ruby, did this kind of wavy design, and then used the gold. This is the piece that I wanted to show you. Look at that gold. It looks so much better in person. But even though there's a ton of paint here, it didn't crack at all. And you can still kind of see the lines, even though it's all solid, like this has like the little patchwork here, we can see the red underneath it. You can still see the lines from the metallic paint. So even though it's all solid, you can still see the pattern in there. We'll do a quick close up of all of it. There's some more of that pattern. It's so cool. I'm really, really happy with the way this one turned out. So this is all 30 between the two videos. Let me know in the comments on this video which one is your overall favorite. I'd love to hear it. And if there's a technique that I didn't do in this series that you want to see, and I can make that happen for you as well. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and it makes you happy.